snakes on this plane. Oh, yeah, snakes on a plane. Well, you've been hearing a lot about it, and it's out in theaters this weekend. So we wanted to learn a little more about our reptilian friends. So we want to see if Anita's going to wrap that around her body this morning. She is out on the plaza with some snakes. Yeah, snakes out on the plaza. <laughs> That's exactly where I want to be. Kim, you should get out here, actually. Here to tell us more about uh, this snake right here is Mark Herbert. He's from the Brookfield Zoo. Good morning. Good morning. What do we have here? Who do we have here? We have Ivy, which is a Brazilian rainbow boa. May I touch? You may touch, yes. Pick up or no? Real gentle. Okay. No, I think she'd right. He looks pretty comfortable oh, sitting right there. Well, These snakes are found deep in the rainforest of Brazil. If we had a little more sunlight out, her she would actually appear to be glowing. Her scales all act like prisms Ooh, and cool. reflect light back. This is probably cold for her today, right? It's it's, it's a little bit, a yeah. little bit, but She'd not too bad. A rock, a warm rock. If Looking she could. for a place to warm up. All correct. Right, this is the only snake we got out here today. No, Who we've got a have? couple other ones. So let me put Herb down, and we can get the next one out. Does that snake uh, bite you if you try to handle it at all, or is that? There's no, obviously some danger calm. in some of them. Okay. What, what we, we have, have here is a western fox snake. Can I touch this one? You can definitely touch this one. Okay. This snake is actually native to the Chicago land area and fairly so common cool. out in a lot of the more rural areas, a lot of the forest preserve. Uh, these guys will get up to about four feet at full size. So this one's probably about three years old right now. These are actually a good a good snake to have around. They consume a lot of rodents in the course of a year. So if there's mouse problems, that sort of thing, these guys will handle that for them. They're also unique in that they kind of mimic the one venomous snake that is found in this area, which is the Massasauga rattlesnake. They're patterned very similar to it. They'll even do this really cool thing if they feel threatened. What's that? They'll go and vibrate their tail. And if they're in dried leaves or twigs, It'll make a buzzing noise, very similar to a rattlesnake's rattle. So they'll try to fool um, whatever's coming up and, and bothering them. That's so cool to touch them. What do you feed them at the zoo, though? I mean, I imagine, you know, that you're talking about what happens in the wild, but what about at the zoo? Well, a snake like this, we feed small mice to. And uh, when we get into the bigger boas, we get into things like rats that they would eat. Okay, and that one stays in a little Rubbermaid thing. Now, now inside here, you've got something a little bigger. Oh, yeah. We, here we have a common boa. Oh, my goodness. Right Wait, you see this one. Holy cow. Holy cow. I'm not going to try to touch that one. Wow, how long is this thing? This snake is a Let me really jump over here. about six and a half, seven feet long, and she weighs close to 30 pounds. Um, considerably heavier after you've held her for a little bit and she kind of wraps around you and you're holding back on those muscles. Can I touch the head on that um, Not probably good. If not you a want good idea. <laughs> sure. Right on the top, kind of between the eyes. Oh, wow. There you go. Oh, and man, as I that said, is so she cool. weighs probably about 30 pounds. A snake like this we feed large rats to. Um, usually about every 10 days to two weeks is all they need to eat snake like this would be found in Colombia, parts of Mexico. And how many rats would this snake eat and, and how often does it eat? We would give her two large rats every 10 days. Uh, when you get into some of your larger pythons, you can even feed them once every three weeks to four weeks because they're eating such a big meal. What's it take for a guy like you to do a job like this? Um, a lot of passion. I love what I do. I've wanted to work with reptiles really all my life and now I have some of these at home I do have a few at home I had to ask that I imagine <laughs> that you would <laughs> a lot of us uh, especially with reptiles uh, our passion extends beyond our work to our uh, everyday lives okay thank you so much Mark yep, I really great. appreciate it and thanks for the experience too Kim you got to come out here and check this out but right now I'll hand it back over to you in the studio where it's nice and safe and away from this guy <laughs> I definitely crown you with the Anchor Bravery Award this morning, Anita Padilla. She actually touched that thing. Yikes. Hey, here's something interesting if you're in the mood to hear more about snakes. We did a little checking and found it's pretty difficult to get a snake on a plane. Yeah, the reptiles are actually prohibited from cabins on commercial airliners. United Airlines tells us you can ship any animal in cargo as long as it's safely secured, less than 50 pounds and not poisonous. American Airlines might let you ship a snake as cargo, but you would have to go through a lengthy approval process beforehand. Just thought you should know.